Hello and welcome to this presentation on placing an end cap pressure on a pipe or nozzle in order to properly capture stresses on a pipe or pressure vessel, pressure vessel nozzle, elbow, T-intersection, or other type of model subject to internal pressures. Here is a very simplified model of a pressure vessel. There will be internal pressure and there's a nozzle on the side. We'd like to capture the end cap pressures on this vessel in order to get the right longitudinal stresses in addition to the circumferential stresses that are going to be caused by the internal pressure. This is the body that we're interested in. In order to capture end cap pressure on this nozzle, what we're going to do is build on these other parts. We have an extension piece on the end of the nozzle It'll have the same wall thickness as the nozzle, or if this nozzle was designed to reduce to a pipe, it would have the wall thickness of the pipe. It extends far enough in space that localized effects here do not propagate to the end, and so end effects, because we've simply put on a flat, heavy, thick plate, those end effects don't propagate down into the region of interest. This might be five times root RT or something more. It'll be up to the user to examine what would be a sufficient length to place. Here we see the internal pressure on the model. And if I go to a wireframe view, you can look around the inside and see that we've successfully created that internal pressure everywhere. Let's have a look at the loads on here. We've put a frictionless support on the bottom. Now you may need a more realistic model. This is just highly simplified and we're mainly interested in what's happening around this nozzle. So we've put frictionless support. It'll keep the bottom flat. We've put in a remote displacement. It acts just on the inside edge and its purpose is to prevent movement in the X Z plane. You see it here. No movement in X no movement in Z, and we don't want it to spin around the global Y. At the other end, we'd like to capture the longitudinal stress in this vessel, and since we have not built in a model of a head on this part, what we've done is put a pressure up here and manually calculated a pressure that is going to be equal to the pressure inside the vessel multiplied by the area of the inside diameter on this end, divided by the area of that red end cut. Note the minus sign. So the number is put in here manually. Now we've built this extension piece and out on the end of it we've put a thick cap. These have been set up in the multi-body part so we don't have to bother with any contacts between bodies we get a continuous mesh. We've gone to a fairly fine mesh. This is just for illustration purposes. There's the internal pressure and it does put pressure on the end cap. If I go to my wireframe view you can see that the end cap has a diameter on the inside that just fits the end of this extension pipe. With that, we're essentially ready to go. You can see that some effort has been put into meshing to get a decently behaved mesh. Although, to get high quality stresses, particularly in the intersection area here, to get high quality stress concentration values, you'd need an even finer mesh than what we're looking at. If we go down, the loads again, inside pressure, frictionless support on the bottom, remote displacement on the inside edge to stop this thing from moving freely in space, an end cap pressure up here, and the pressure, remember, on the inside of the actual cap is going to create longitudinal stress in the nozzle. As a check on the model, we've inserted force reaction values down here to see whether we got any force on that remote displacement point, and we're fine there. It'll turn out to be virtually zero. 
and we're checking the force reaction in a vertical direction in order to discover whether we get the axial force that we anticipated when we multiplied pressure times the inside area of the top. Let's have a look at what resulted after we solved this model. Here's a stress over everything, although we're really only interested in the stress in the pressure vessel itself. What's added out here is merely to capture the axial stress. Note that we've made the extension piece long enough that the stresses in here don't vary much around the circumference. A deformation check shows vertical movement. It's because of the end cap pressure. Here is the stress in the extension piece, and we want it long enough that the stresses that come from what happens at the nozzle don't go out to the end. There's a circumferential stress check, and we are far enough away from the nozzle out here that you don't see a strong variation in stresses going around the circumference. On the end body only, you'll see more detail. It's used as an insight as to whether we really ought to make this thing longer. There's some z-axis stress variation going along here, and once again the extension piece gets away from the localized effect where the nozzle punches a hole in the side of the pressure vessel. Here's what we're really interested in. The stress is in the pressure vessel. The nozzle here does not provide enough reinforcement to prevent high stresses on the perimeter of the hole. So you'll see much higher stresses here than are existing generally in the wall of the pressure vessel. Typical pressure vessel design might call for a thick-walled nozzle in order to make up for the missing material in the hole and prevent these high stresses. Meanwhile, we are getting a longitudinal stress because of the end cap pressure. Let's go check those force reactions. There's the one at the base, and you can see virtually zero in both X and Z. There's the vertical reaction, and 15068 should be the force in the axial direction. A quick check on what's happening in here, where the hole was cut in the pressure vessel, and you can see that it is a circumferential stress that's dominating the principal stresses where the hole was cut in the side of the pressure vessel. And here's a look at a stress contour map on the face only. If you want to get rid of these ripples, you'll need an even finer mesh. Here's what the mesh looks like. And you'd need to specify finer meshing if you want to get more detail. As it is, the model has a little under 400,000 nodes. So that's going to give us in excess of a million degrees of freedom. Fortunately, modern computers can cope with this kind of thing. With extra effort, you could have far more hex elements in this model and have a more efficient model. It would just take more labor in cutting up geometry and finding meshing techniques. The purpose of this presentation, then, was to have a quick look at capturing an end cap pressure. It was done by building an extension on the end of a nozzle, have a smooth result here, and then pick up that longitudinal force by including pressure on the interior of this cap. Thank you for joining me.